Hey everybody, Miranda oh. Patron back here with you. Why am I upside down? Um, I have a lot of changes <laughs> going on and a few announcements of stuff to get out of the way first. So um, my first is that I'm going to kind of have to start dialing things back a little bit for kind of a temporary season here. Uh, we have a lot going on in our family. There's um, just too much to even list at this point and I am going to have to shut down my Patreon site as that's just one more split of time that I can't afford to be on there all the time and it's just another split of my attention so um, that will be shutting down March 31st um, but hopefully someday soon I'll be able to reopen it um, also I am going to probably just be doing around one video a month and try to keep it at that. I'm not disappearing completely. I'm going to do my best to stay on here because um, I love interacting with you all and keep this going. So Facebook and Instagram will still be up, but that's probably not going to be as, I won't be as active on there as I have been in the past. Um, still going to try to answer questions and stuff when I can, um, but it is, it's going to be a little bit dwindled of my time online. So there's just a heads up for that. <laughs> um, as far as my Etsy shop that's still up and going, I am still trying to keep the um, angle spot detailer stocked in there as well as the petite spotter. And I found some more of the white gel pens that I'll put back in there as well. Um, but there's been some shipping issues, a couple like that. So some of the items are coming out, but it is still all free shipping. Uh, hey, so housekeeping items out of the way. Um, recently, I was in contact with Deco Art and another artist, and we've been talking about just kind of doing not really a challenge, um, kind of a challenge, but not between the other artists and I. Deco Art gave us a color palette um, with some confined um, confinements, just those colors that they sent us and wanted to see what we could create with just those colors. So another artist and I are working on that. So that's gonna be exciting. Um, it's actually the thing that I'm going to be creating today is gonna be using some of those colors and it's the new color line from DecoArt. So that's kind of exciting. Um, excuse me. And yeah, so let's get started with that. I started with just a sketch here of a flower on, oh, on the Santorini stones. That's another thing I wanted to mention. Um, Cap Couriers is now carrying the Santorini stones. So you can see all those gorgeous little flecks of mica in there to give it that shine that everyone loves. Um, so this is one of their stones that they sent me to paint on, which is super exciting. I love these stones. These are amazing. Um, and I can't wait to get started on it. So I just sketched out a little flower here, and there are stencils by Deco Art where they have flowers, they have sea creatures, they have words, they have all sorts of stuff. So you could check out their stencils if you were looking for something specific, like a rose or any of those. But this one I just sketched out to kind of be able to paint today for y'all. Plus I wanted something that kind of fit this stone. I kind of just been thinking spring, so I think a nice little flower will be just what we need to kind of uplift the doldrum spirits of the the gray winter we've had. All right. So one of the things that I would like to do with this stone also is leave somewhat of negative space between the stem. Um, and then also on the leaves, just because I really, this beautiful white stone, I want to have it shine through a little bit on the design. I mean, I have lots of empty here too, but I don't know. I kind of like to incorporate that into the design. So I've got the stem here and then on the leaves that I will be leaving as a negative space area. This flower, I think I'm going to kind of, as far as the leaves are concerned, just do it more... Um, it's with dots, but I'll do it more of with a fill of color as opposed to mandala type designs. Um, but then I was going to try to put some mandala design dot shapes into the petals. So 
I kind of have a plan in mind for this one, which I know is a shocker for you all because that's not my thing usually, but um, I kind of have the plan of doing that. So that's my hope. So the f color that I think that I'm going to start off with is called Mermaid Tail. And like I said, these are some of the new ones from DecoArt. Um, I'm pretty sure they're available on their website now if you're looking for these colors and can't find them in the stores. Oh, it's so rich. All right, so I'm gonna start filling in my leaves at the base. So I kind of just want the darker portion to be at the base. And ultimately what I would like to do is just erase the lines afterwards and see if that's a defined enough shape without actually having an outline. I might do an outline after, but I'm gonna try it without it first, so. And I'm just kind of haphazardly placing some larger, some smaller, larger near the base. And then just filling in around with some smaller ones. And then we'll do kind of like an accent highlight color in between to kind of highlight the, the dark. We'll do use a little bit lighter shade called Green Lagoon. And we'll intersperse that throughout these dots that we're putting down now of the darker. But you really, you wanna try to really get up close to your edge lines to kind of help create that outline without an outline once you erase the lines. Does that make sense? Outline without an outline. Your dots will create the pattern of the leaf for you. If you can just pack them in there pretty tight. So right now, I'm not packing them in tight. You can see I'm kind of leaving space. I'm leaving space for the highlight ones. Um, but after these ones dry, then I can go back and really kind of crunch in some more and pack in that design. You don't want to do it now because they'll bleed into one another, unfortunately. But while they're drying, you can always work on other parts of your design. So if you're like me and impatient and don't want to watch paint dry, that's usually the workaround. So this paintbrush is the angle spot detailer that I was speaking of earlier that's in my Etsy shop. Um, a lot of you already have it, which is awesome. And a lot of you have said you really enjoy working with it, having not to go back and forth to the palette because you can have more paint loaded into a brush bristle than you can the dotting tools. And this one's a size 20, but if you're looking to go smaller, that petite spotter that I spoke about is, a, let's see, I'm sorry, the angle spot detailer is a 10, but the little spotters are 20. And they have a nice thick handle actually for better gripping, so you can see the difference between the two of these. Thinner, thicker, but this is super tiny on the end really really tiny dots to get in between even smaller than my etcher the smallest dotting tool but also you can just do light light just with the point of your brush to get smaller dots you just push down harder bigger wiggle it around a little to keep your circles or you can just go with dotting tools, and that is what a lot of people do. So that's a possibility as well. All right, 
And I'm gonna let those guys dry and work on another area of the flower. Okay, so I think I'm kind of more like maybe go debating whether or not I want to go from the bottom in a sort of mandala pattern or if I want to just do separate I think it would be different mandalas cut out of the petals on each petal so do different mandalas on each petal which is what I'm thinking I might go with it's a little something different here and obviously you're not gonna be able to fit a whole mandala on it unless you're doing the super tiny mini ones but um, I think I'm gonna do that I'm going to grab here this is berry cobbler it's a nice rich kind of magenta pink type color and we'll do that on the starter here for our first one so again I'm just using the same brush and we'll do let's see we'll start down a little farther here maybe and do kind of just a half circle as if the rest of the mandala was on the other side of the petal or flower. And then we'll just give it a go with some little little dots around it here. I'm just stealing from the center because it's wet and there's enough paint there to go ahead and grab some of it like I said you know try to stay close to your lines so that you can get rid of them after and have a good flush outline just with your dots I've been working on really large canvases lately so going back to a smaller stone is more of a challenge than I anticipated It'll be all right. Okay, the next color is purple petal. It's kind of fitting for our spring flower. And I'll put a few little dots around here with that. To kind of add to the design here. All right, so if you were to have your full-size mandala, you normally do the plus sign 90 degree angles. So just keep that in mind. If you want it centered, then that would have been there. And then gauge about where your other 90 degrees would be. Does that make sense? So I probably am only going to be able to toss that one there. And then we'll do the 45 degree angles here. Like that. So if this one had it been across, it would be off the flower. So I don't want to pack that purple in there because it's going to make the design look off. Let me see if I can show it better. So this would have been part of the 90 degree. And you would go across to right here. So that's technically off your flower. So think of it had it been the full design. Okay, I'm going to go back to that berry cobbler color. We're going to go the next row out with fairly larger dot here. And again, I'm using the same paintbrush. I'm just loading more paint onto it. And then you just kind of wiggle it around. I know a lot of you have joked with me about being a paint pusher, but that's really, in essence, what you're doing. You, you put it down in the center of where you would want the center of your dot, and then just kind of wiggle it around, pushing the paint into the size dot that you want, that you require for that area. And now this little guy down here is just barely going to fit part of him in. because technically the entire dot that size would be off off the petal. Does that make sense? Alright y'all, I'm pretty bummed out because I think I just 
just did a whole section and I flipped the record off instead of on. So I'm back on again and I'm not sure how far back at this point I did that, but I will check it out in the editing session. But for now, Open Water was the one I was using and it's a blue, bluish but it's kind of like a darkish turquoise too, so it has some green elements to it. I was saying it helps give you the depth down in the darker part of the leaf to offset the dark green that we first used. I know some of you are going, no, don't put blue on a green leaf, but it's, uh, it's helpful because it'll help you delineate the dots rather than just using all your dark green down here. It still looks more like a pointillism piece and you're filling in the dots here opposite the dark green, so it you can still see that they're all little circles, more like a pointillism piece. And that, that helps you with your color choices, is just kind of giving it a little contrast here and there so that it can still show all the little dots, especially when you're doing the free flowing um, dotting. You know, if you're just filling big spaces is what I'm trying to say. So it'll kind of help you delineate your area, but also give a little depth with the colors. I hope that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the berry again. Try this off a little better. And around the navy that we did, I'm gonna do a row of the berry. And I'm just putting these on a little bit thinner so that they're a little bit lighter. So while I'm working with the berry, I'm going to come over to this other petal here and kind of decide where I would like my center on this mandala on this side to start. And I just want to do it off center from the other one as if they were haphazardly put on the petals, not, oh, this one's directly across from that. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. I kind of like that they're different. And some of the red colors, I know a lot of people were having trouble with them being um, semi-transparent or not showing all the way. So this, this one is just full coverage as soon as I put it down. You see, I didn't have to do double coats. I didn't have to, I mean, I kind of layer it thick anyway when I load my brush, but that's as dark as it is for now. You're not seeing any of the stone through it. I'm going to change it up a little just because it's a different mandala. I'm going to go to the navy instead of the purple, but still using a lot of the same colors so that they all tie into one another, but it doesn't have to be the exact same. I'm debating whether or not to just do three or if I want to do the whole shebang. <laughs> And these colors that Deco Art picked out go so nicely together. They're great shade transitions. I got a few other ones that are going to be nice and lighter on them. So I'm pretty excited about using them and really thankful to Deco Art for allowing us to do this. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna go with this tropical blue here, and I'm actually I think I'm just gonna paint the stem solid because then it'll kind of be some sort of contrast to the dots as opposed to trying to fill in with a bunch of dots. But obviously your design, when you're doing your design, you're at liberty to choose whatever you want for yours. So that's what I think I'm gonna decide to do with mine is just go solid. Or you can even do solid with a background and then dot, dot the solid after. Again, this is a bluish green, so it ties nicely into our leaves without really overpowering it or making just the stem stand out. You know, you're blending, just go shades at a time. And this is similar um, to your swipes. You know, you're pushing down harder in the fatter areas and then just let up so gently at the end to get the thinner, thinner lines. I actually really, really like that stem color so much. I think I'm gonna toss it in here to tie it into our petal colors. So again, that was the um, tropical blue. And I'm just gonna do some a little bit bigger dots in here. And that way you're carrying the colors throughout your design too. Yep, that's pretty. All right, how about over here? Let's toss a couple down in between these little guys. Okay, moving farther out, I'm going to grab some more of that navy. I'm back to this first mandala area here. And I'm gonna put a larger, let's do a larger dot here. And so there would be one over this had the petal continued. But we're gonna skip that one. And this little guy has enough space we can put one. And then this little guy over here just barely probably has enough for a little semicircle. But you can see that way too, you're kind of planning in your head where the pattern would have gone and that helps you space, like relate to the space here. All right, let's grab the berry again. We'll go over here. Let's kind of do sort of like a petal shape Let's see, if you're using dotting tools, how can I explain how to do this? Um, kind of make two crescents. So it'll be similar. Like with this, I can just paint a little petal shape. But you can do kind of two little crescents together with a dotting tool. Or you can sketch it out and fill it in. Um, or you can even draw with your dotting tools. Just 
reshape this guy a little here. All right, so there is another color to add in here called Vintage Pink. And I think it's gonna give some good contrast in our mandala here. Let's do, well, we could sort of do the petal shape on here as well, or we could do dots around. I think first what I'd like to do is kind of tuck some down in here and that way we're bringing the color throughout the mandala to like a nice peachy pink and I'm debating on that so I'm gonna go over here let's kind of do we'll just do one dot above these a little bigger Sometimes, too, working on the smaller pieces, you don't want to get it too, too crowded. And, and sometimes, too, if you keep throwing in too many colors, it can kind of detract from your design and just get a little um, chaotic. So if you're keeping in the similar vein of colors, which DecoArt gave us a pretty decent palette, like I said, that way, too, you can kind of make the colors work together with one another whereas you see the, like the pink offsets there's pink and the red and purple but we could still have the light purple here and all the colors work pretty decently together okay so it's a little bit crowded in the design here but I think I'm just gonna do some kind of dainty light light swipes to tuck around here with that pink and I'll just kind of make it an upside down V that you're just kind of tucking it in just to give a sort of base for another design element on top and here we're going to end it at the petal because our petal ends right there so we don't want to crowd too much, but you want to keep the shape of your petal. So follow your line of your petal like that. And then over here, it's going to end at the base of that petal. All right, so that, which one was that? The, do, 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 do. the mermaid tail. That's not the one I'm looking for. The tropical blue, I think, was this one. Yes, all right. So the tropical blue really looks nice against that pink. So I think I'm gonna bring a couple dots of that out here on top of each of the pinks. Like this. I always have a real affinity anyway for turquoise colors, so I tend to gravitate towards that for the beach and and of course metallics, you know, the sand and sea. <laughs> so alright. just debating what color I'm gonna put a larger dot out here but I'm just debating the next color maybe we will go with the berry again um, and then after the berry dries put a little dot of the purple that we didn't put over here yet the purple petal In 
and here I'm at the end of my petal, so I'm just going to put a little tiny dot in here, maybe shape it up a little so it looks like it, there would be my circle there. And I'm not going to try over here to crowd them in. So you can all get a peek at how we're going here. Now sometimes that's hard when you're seeing it upside down for half the stuff, half the video. All right. So I'm gonna go back to our pink here and just grab two little dots for either side of the peaks of those petals that we put in. A little bit on the larger side from the teal that we put down, but not quite as uh, big as the burgundy dot, or I'm sorry, berry cobbler dot that we have down. Alright, so let's go back and grab some more of that yummy tropical blue. I think I'm addicted to this one. <laughs> we'll do a nice big old dot up here. that one and it's not going to go all the way out here so it's just going to be a little bit that you'll see because this is the finish of this petal but you want to give the illusion that that dot is tucked there had the design continued There we go. Maybe that's a little better of a zoom in there. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little more of the dark blue to go around that turquoise that we just put down. So the Royal Navy. Just gonna go around that larger tropical blue that we have here. I'll do two rows of that. And then we have to remember that this little guy's over here. So he would have gotten some navy too. And then I would have done two rows around him as well. So it's all about kind of just gauging and remembering where the design was going and where it would have been had you had more space. All right, I think I'm going to lighten it up on the other side with that green lagoon that we used on our leaf. And then uh, maybe I'll just do one dot above the blue. And this one I can't quite, maybe I can get a full, just almost dot in there and we'll do some of the navy down and around that as well. So you see there's lots of different design elements that you can place in something to make a different mandala design.
go back to that navy and try to tuck in one more here and on either side like that and then down the side as well so it kind of gives that point to a petal my in-home studio excuse the noises all right so again it's that navy the royal navy there would have been a big dot there and then working our way down the side and then a big one up top above and then down the side of that one. Okay, let's pull in, let's see. That tropical blue I think we used down below. We'll pull that up to the top now. We're making them a little bit bigger the dots and now I think what I'm going to do is just fill in the rest of the petal top here with the berry and do down here as well. Mm I'm just debating on this side if I want to, what I want to do. All right, so I think because we have the lighter colors here, I want to, do I want to go with the berry out here as well? Yeah, maybe I do. Let's fill in the rest of this bottom flower with burgundy as well. And that way most of the flower is that kind of pretty burgundy color. All right, so the more I look at this, I'm thinking if we do mandalas on these petals, it's just gonna look chaotic and it's gonna take away from our pretty outside petals. So I think for the inner petals, what I'm gonna try to do is just do vertical lines, not vertical, but like a kind of a V it would be if you could see the whole petal. So in the shape of a V, or maybe we just want to do one color for each petal that we have incorporated down here. Now I'm changing it up on myself. So this is kind of the thought process that goes through my mind, which some of you like, and some of you have said that I talk too much, which it's fine. It's not for everybody, but Feel like hearing the thought process too kind of helps you develop your own way of thinking about how to do um, a project so I don't want to detract from our great little petals we have happening here um, so I'm gonna kind of marinate on the idea for a minute of which direction if I want to just do one total color you could even do solid colors paint your petals solid colors but like I said too with this one I really want as much as possible for the Santorini stone to, to shine through 
our design. So maybe I'll try to even think about incorporating that into what we do on these other petals. Okay, so I think what I've decided is I'm gonna go with a fill type pointillism like we did for the leaves, but I'm gonna change the design up ever so slightly so that we have some negative space that is the Santorini stone showing through like I really want it to for this. So I'm just going to make a space in between our petals here and then a space here in between these. And like I said, these can change, you know, whenever. So I might even change it up after I get this sketched out. So it may not stay this way. But this is sort of the process that you can go through for many a piece. Kind of that trial and error. So I like that, but it feels a little disjointed. A little too ge geometric, I think. I'll have to think about it for a minute. So that's kind of the idea. So you're ending up with more black space so that it'll be white in between. I'm kind of feeling that it's too disjointed, but I'm going to think about it for a minute. Okay. It was too disjointed for me for this design. So I think we're going to fill with the darker since we have mostly the burgundy and the light here will fill in with the dark navy for this petal and then maybe do one of the teal ones for this one and then the berry for the top one so that way we're tying in all three colors um, from our design the main ones anyway um, and you're not we won't have the negative space for the Santorini stone I just don't think it works that well with this piece so just personal preference and you all can change it how you prefer. So like I said, we're going to go with the Royal Navy again for the front petal, dark, just because it's going to help contrast in here with the lighter ones. And I'm just going to fill the whole petal. So I like to haphazardly just put in the large dots first and then it allows me to go back and fill in, you know, the smaller ones too, which we might even do some contrast, put a, just toss a tiny bit of white in this um, blue so that it'll give us the contrast. Or you can just do a full, full fill without overlapping the dots as best so you can see the delineation of the dots is basically what I'm looking for. back to that delicious tropical blue to do this one here. And then our berry. Over here.
All right, so why that top part is drying, I'm just going to erase some of our lines down here where it is dry already. Just to kind of take a peek on how our design looks without the lines. I think we're actually in good shape on the leaves and the stem, which is exciting. It's nice when a, a plan comes together, especially as someone who tends to fly by the seat of her pants. <laughs> I'm thankful that it looks like it worked out on the base here. And on the outside, I think, of these, it's worked nicely. The only concern, I think, would be the inner petals and what they look like as far as being delineated from one another. But you can see this is actually really, really nice without the lines. And then you still have that negative space in the center of the leaf, which I, I really like. It looks nice, I think. All right. All right, so yeah, some of the lines erased. And these are dry enough where I can go back and put a little more fill in. And I'm going to make it a little more dense because I am using the same color. I think that kind of helps a little bit, but I maybe should have left a little more space throughout here to have it be kind of that separation that we have a little here and here on the petals, but it's one of those live and learn situations. You never know unless you try it, so the next time I do it, I know I just leave a little more space because I wasn't 100% on the way it stayed separate this time. Or next time you can do a whole different way, like doing the lines of dots or rows instead of a straight fill. But that is the fun about art. One thing I'm thinking you could do also is if you wanted it completely different contrast, you could go back in here with white to delineate the petals a little better. And you can kind of see where they're separated here. So that's all right, but. All right, so you get the idea. So I'll just finish probably filling in a little more on the berry once it's dry and a little heavier maybe in the teal just to kind of show the delineation of those petals. But I don't think I'm gonna outline with, mine, with anything, but in the future I would have left a little more space not the end of the world. So I hope you like this little flower that we did today and I hope it gave you a chance to get a feel for some of the new deco art colors that are out which is super exciting and uh, also to get a good look at these new stones 
from Cap Couriers. They're pretty reasonable priced for the Santorini stones. And they're a great company to work with. They've been very kind. So I don't have any complaints whatsoever. All right, I hope you guys are all doing well. And I am hoping to get on, like I said, hopefully at least once a month. And if that doesn't happen again, I apologize in advance for that. We just have a lot going on and I really, really appreciate um, all your patience and everything with this. So I know it's hard when you have expectations of someone and I really, really want to keep it going, but it's just not feasible for us right now. So what little I can, I will get on as much as I can. <laughs> all right. And if you are looking for me, as always, I'm on Instagram and Facebook now also. And uh, I hope that you all have a great day and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy painting!